Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this right here is the effects of a collision between two different planets. In today's video we're going to be investigating this new study that just came out that was able to simulate planetary collisions extremely accurately. And they were also able to discover a few things about planetary collisions that might help us learn more about planet Earth. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Man. Some of the first videos on the channel were always about planetary collisions, well, mostly because they just looked so, so cool. And also because there is quite a lot of things we can learn about planetary collisions in trying to understand why planet Earth is so different from some of the other planets including Mars and Venus. Now, in this particular simulation in Universe Sandbox, unfortunately the collisions are beautiful, but they're just not really realistic. This is not exactly how it works in real life. And so, a supercomputer is necessary to try to simulate what really happens to a planet, and in this case planet Earth, when something large like another planet or a very large moon collides and essentially creates all sorts of different effects. Although admittedly, this is actually pretty cool. The effects generated in this simulation are still quite amazing. But anyway, so some of the modern studies, such as this one that was recently released in one of the uh, scientific papers, essentially investigate the long-term changes that planets go through after something very massive collides with them. And this is really important because, as I mentioned before, one major difference between planet Earth that you see right here and, for example, our nearest neighbor, Venus, is that they do have extremely different atmospheres and also extremely different climates, even though billions of years ago they were probably very, very similar. And also, on the other hand, we have objects like Mars that are also different, but in a completely different way. There's almost no atmosphere here, there's no magnetosphere, and the planet has lost everything that it used to have. But one major difference between Earth and the other two planets is that, well, it has the moon here, it's a very large object, and most of the modern theories suggest that the moon was actually created when another planet known as Theia, that was probably around the size of Mars, collided with planet Earth and eventually created the object that we know as moon today. And so the idea here is that because of the moon, Earth is very different from other planets, and because of this early collision that happened a few billion years ago, we also might have very different conditions on the planet compared to some of the other objects out there. And one of the major investigations in this paper is in regards to the loss of atmosphere, which actually is the biggest difference between Venus, Mars and Earth. They wanted to investigate how much atmosphere is lost depending on the angle of impact and depending on how fast the object is moving as well. So they varied the size, the angle and also the speed of the object colliding with imaginary planet Earth to discover how all of this transforms with time and how the atmosphere changes as well. And they did have some really interesting discoveries. But before we talk about them, let's just actually watch one of the amazing videos that were created with these supercomputer simulations. All of these simulations here use roughly around 100 million different particles and in this particular case this is a head-on really fast speed collision that essentially results in a complete loss of atmosphere and the final planet is going to be extremely different from Earth, very likely very similar to Mars actually. And then there is a simulation like this that sort of shows you what may have happened with Earth and Theia approximately 4.5 billion years ago. Now today we believe that Moon was actually formed about 80 or so million years after we originally proposed it to be formed, which means that it's slightly younger. But the point here is that a very specific angle and a very specific speed and mass are necessary to produce Earth with just the right amount of atmosphere and of course with the Moon orbiting around itself as well. In other words, in some sense you can almost say that Earth got super lucky with the collision because if it was more head-on, it would most likely lose all of its atmosphere and turn into Mars, and if the object was either less massive or more massive or, or moving at a different angle, it would also actually produce very different conditions at the end. In other words, if we were to compare this to the other simulated Earth I tried to create using Universe Sandbox, it really doesn't simulate the atmospheric evolution that well, and also doesn't really simulate the mixture of all of the materials on the inside either. But it is nevertheless pretty. So it's something that I use for special effects, not so much for science. 
But for this study, they ran about 100 different detailed simulations of various types of planets colliding and were then able to discover that there's actually a very interesting, sort of like almost a linear relationship between the angle and the mass of the objects colliding and the amount of atmosphere that is lost because of the collision. And one of the major discoveries here is that these so-called gradient impacts, like the one you see right here, are the only ones that allowed the planet to actually maintain its atmosphere long term. All of the other impacts unfortunately resulted in a tremendous loss of the atmosphere over time and the planets were essentially barren at the end. And this is actually a kind of an important finding because we know that all planets with time received collisions and we also think that though Venus also received collisions they were probably not as dramatic and possibly not as powerful as the ones on Earth. And because of this it was able to actually sort of with time acquire a very very thick atmosphere as well and essentially turn into this really super hot world that it is today. In other words, maybe a grazing collision would have helped this planet to evolve into a more Earth-like planet with time. But most importantly, we also know that Mars had a very large and pretty much head-on collision with the northern part of the region. And one of the reasons scientists today believe that Mars received a very powerful head-on collision early on is because when we look at its shape, its geography, the northern part of Mars has a kind of a crater-like formation and it also makes the planet a little bit more squished on this side compared to the southern side. Also, these regions here are much younger and do seem to represent a very unusual crater-like formation that suggests that Mars was most likely flattened by something really massive early in its existence billions of years ago. So this means that Mars, unlike Earth, received a very powerful head-on collision somewhere in the northern region, which most likely transformed its shape, but also very likely caused a lot of the atmosphere here to slowly dissipate and possibly disappear completely. But today we also mostly blame the disappearance of the atmosphere on Mars on the eventual disappearance of the magnetic field here, as well as generally low mass that Mars has compared to Earth. But it's also possible that this impact early on dramatically increased the loss of atmosphere in early Mars and essentially doomed early Mars to never have any thick atmosphere in the future. So the major collision, the small mass and also eventually the disappearance of magnetosphere is what eventually resulted in Mars practically having no atmosphere at all and thus being unable to maintain any more water on the surface. So depending on the collision and depending on the type of the impact planets receive, if they're lucky enough, they might actually end up like Earth, with some of the ancient thicker atmosphere being drained and turned into more habitable atmosphere, which then of course allows for more habitable, more terrestrial conditions. But other planets that experience head-on collisions, most likely having the opposite effects, either losing all of their atmospheres, especially if the collision is very powerful and very, very head-on, or possibly losing not enough atmosphere and turning it into Venus if the collision is just not powerful enough. And because the researchers behind this paper are still investigating even more collisions of different types, they might actually also discover some other unexpected effects and unexpected discoveries coming from these very powerful collisions. And although this is something that happened billions of years ago and doesn't really affect our life today as much, it's actually kind of important for us to study these effects because we do want to try to discover another terrestrial planet somewhere out there and so understanding impacts and how these impacts influence other planets is actually really important in our search for another planetary system with another Earth. More and more studies seem to suggest that having an early impact and also having a moon like our own is really important for the maintenance of habitable conditions on the planet so these impacts could actually be really crucial, but not just any impact. Very unique and very specific grazing impacts like you see right here. In other words, it looks like we once again got lucky with our planet because its impact was just at the right angle and just at the right speed. But anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. You can check out more about the study itself in the description below and you can learn more about impacts of different types in some of the previous videos I made on the channel. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.